Hello everybody, salut, quoi de neuf, coucou, and all that jazz. It's Corey Fry here, French Fry in Paris, and this is time. It's basically time for number 15 of our live video series. I'm here at Place de la Concorde, and as I wait for a few live viewers to show up, uh, let me talk to the folks on the replay. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this out. Up, oh, I've got my first live viewers here on board. Hello, Marianne, you get the award for being first. My brother comes in second, nice. So today, as the description uh, details, having a little walk from Place de la Concorde to La Madeleine, which is a, uh, a beautiful church from way back. And I'll show you that uh, in due time. And as I wait for a few more of you to arrive, a uh, beautiful day here, my goodness. It's the warmest day that we've had this year. And so a really good time to be strolling around and preparing a little vicarious stroll for all of you. Uh, we're looking at the La, Grand, La Grande Rue de Paris, La Grande Rue. Uh, basically a big Ferris wheel. Love it or hate it, it's there uh, many months of the year. Does de definitely offer a nice view of Paris if you can go all the way up there. Uh, not being a big fan of heights, you probably won't find me up there anytime soon, but uh, if any of you do, be sure to take some photos and send it my way. So here we go, we can get underway here. We've got about 150 live viewers here. So glad that you're all joining me. Thank you so much. Hello, Gail. Hello, Trish. We're at Place de la Concorde here on the cusp of the 8th arrondissement. So what are we going to do today? I want to show you some great details of this area. This Place de la Concorde wasn't always called that. It was originally called Place Louis XV, la King Louis XV. And this is one of only five royal squares that were ever built in Paris. So you've got Place Dauphine and Place Royale and Place des Victoires, etc. And this used to be named after Louis XV. And let me just give you the pan here to get started. There's always a lot of commotion and traffic here, so... I'm going to have to speak up a bit. That's the Champs-Élysées behind the bus. We can't see it quite yet. Eiffel Tower in the distance there, backlit. Also backlit uh, down the way there is the National Assembly building. That's a, a government building, l'Assemblée Nationale, if you can make that out in the, in the shadows there. In fact, the bridge that leads from Place de la Concorde to that place uh, is made up partly of stones from the Bastille prison. Just as a refresher, I know my brother's in the house here and he always asks for a refresher on the French Revolution. 1789, angry mobs stormed the Bastille. Uh, they stormed the Bastille prison in Paris in the Marais district, not to release prisoners, but to get gunpowder. And they basically killed the, the guard and tore it, tore it apart stone by stone the next day. So some of those stones from the rather infamous Bastille prison to start the French Revolution were used to build that bridge that you see in front of us that leads us to the National Assembly. Beautiful fountain too, but we'll talk about the fountain in a minute. What I want to do here, looking here towards uh, the Tuileries Gardens. Hello, Christina. Christina, hello, Vicky. Yeah, we got a fun walk uh, planned for you today. We've got an obelisk here. This is really the, one of the highlights of Place de la Concorde with that gold tip. Let me tell you about this because it's, uh, it's extraordinary how this obelisk got here. First of all, it's the oldest object in Paris. It's 3,300 years old. And in fact, those hieroglyphics, this did come from Egypt. Those hieroglyphics you see are the life story of a pharaoh named Ramses II. And Ramses II over in Egypt had a palace called the Luxor, the Luxor Palace. So this describes his life. Now, how did it get to Paris? It's kind of a funny story. In 1830, the Viceroy of Egypt, as an act of goodwill, decided to gift two obelisks that adorned the Luxor Palace entrance, the palace of the former pharaoh. So basically they said to France, you can have these two obelisks, but you gotta come get them. And so France decided to do them one by one. So in 1830, they started out, and it was such an immense process. In fact, they put in gold here, the French, put uh, some details about the process of how hard it was to erect this thing. So long story short, they have to get it up the Nile River, so they build a special ship, a crew of 130 plus men, and to get this first obelisk, it's solid granite by the way, to get it from its original spot to the Nile, they had to build a special ship called the Luxor, and it was, they had to raise 30 houses. 30 poor families got their houses raised to the ground just to roll this thing. It took a month and a half to roll it to the Nile River. They had to chop off the front of the ship to get it in and then reattach the front. And then long story short, it was a two year voyage up the Nile River into the Mediterranean, around the Atlantic, around Spain and Portugal, into the English Channel and finally arduously up the Seine. And it took them another few years just to, to erect it. 
So guess what? It was so hard to get it here. The French said to Egypt, you know what? For the second obelisk, thanks, but no thanks. You can have it back. So they eventually officially gave it back to Egypt. And so the twin, the sister of this obelisk, is still alone in Egypt, waiting to be picked up, really. Now, another thing about this obelisk before we move on. Two different occasions, the city tried to turn this into the world's largest sundial. So let me show you here on the pavement. And this has faded away. You see those? We have a Roman numeral there, 12. And then over a little bit further, we have 13 and 14 all the way around the square. So the idea is on a sunny day, this turns into a sundial. And using those uh, Roman numerals, you can actually tell time theoretically. It's not sunny enough to test that out and to show you if it's accurate or not, but interesting that they try to do that. Also, before we leave the obelisk here, hello everybody, hi Cindy. Hi Marlene, thanks for joining, so psyched. 220 of you already, fantastic. And I'll do the official uh, introduction of who I am for those of you who are new. Right here on the western side of the obelisk, we see a plaque that reminds us of the very rich and very bloody history of the French Revolution at Place de la Concorde. So, here at this square, 1763, it was called Place Louis XV. And then in the 1790s, when they started guillotining pretty much every, everyone they could come across, Louis XVI got it. Not exactly on this spot, but the guillotine was set up in this square. Uh, famously, Louis XVI was beheaded, and then several months later, Marie Antoinette, as you can see there. So where were they actually guillotined? Well, they weren't guillotined at the place of this plaque, as you might assume. Uh, there's actually no markings, believe it or not, which is a little bit odd. But generally... Let me see, I'll give you your bearings here. That's the Champs-Elysees with the Arc de Triomphe at the back. So I've got the obelisk to my back. And if you rotate here, right about there in the middle of the street where those people are crossing, they don't realize it, but they're crossing across where essentially Louis XVI was decapitated. And as we walk away from the obelisk, let me introduce you to, uh, to me. Let me introduce myself. Hi, everybody. For those of you who are newcomers, I know there are always a few of you. My name's Corey Fry, a French fry in Paris. I'm a blogger, I'm a photographer, and a full-time tour guide. And so uh, this is the first series of its kind in Paris. We're the only ones doing this on a weekly basis, giving you free live walks through the streets. And so for about 30, 45 minutes, I just show you all of the great stuff that I know about in a certain area. And hopefully wherever you are in the world, you can uh, have the sensation that you're walking through Paris. And so that's the idea. After this broadcast, those of you who are longtime followers know we're going to do a cafe chat. And boy, let me tell you, the special guest on this cafe chat is a special one. French girl in Seattle, who is a, a French girl, a Parisian girl, um, living in Seattle. And she's got a beautiful, beautiful blog and Facebook page all about France. So boy, if you are part of my Patreon team and you have subscribed, you're going to get a private feed, a live feed at the cafe after this walk with French girl in Seattle. I know a lot of you are looking forward to that. Back to Paris. We've got a gorgeous fountain that is empty for the moment, but I'm sure when summer comes, it'll be full of water and doing its thing. Two of these fountains at Place de la Concorde, gorgeous, look at that. Now, those of you who know me, you know I like to get a little bit of a composition so we can meditate a little bit. I think that's not a bad one. So these are from the 1830s, a period that we call the restoration of Paris, um, la restauration. So these are basically nautical themed and ocean themed uh, fountains. And you see the beautiful gold and aqua colors really perfectly illustrate, I think, that feeling of sort of the uh, aquatic vibe. Look at that. It's just stunning. So these you represent things, you know, like water deities and the Seine is represented and you have Poseidon type motifs. And so there's one here and then there's one on the other side of the obelisk. So when these are in full effect, these little fish here actually, oh goodness, once those fish start spurting water high into the air, Life is good. Ah, that way, by the way, that's our final destination you can see in the distance. That's northward toward a church called La Madeleine, um, dedicated to Mary Magdalene. And I've got some fun stuff to show you along the way there. So what else can I say about this square? A couple more things about the guillotine beheadings, because I know I never met a client who didn't like a little bit of sort of bloodshed in their, um, in their tour. So. The oldest person that they guillotined in Paris during the revolution was a 94-year-old woman, and the youngest was a 14-year-old boy. And uh, so they got crazy, and it got so bad towards the end, we call it the reign of terror. And a lot of that activity took place. There was so much bloodshed here on these uh, stones, and the Parisians would come 
from far and wide. They'd bring their kids, they'd bring grandma and grandpa, they'd pack picnics. The city was kind of twisted because they would even uh, organize public executions on the days of outdoor markets to be sure that there would be as many people as possible. So anyway, why don't we find some quieter areas? We'll get away from some of this traffic, at least a little bit of it. Ah, uh, well done, Kelly. Yes, the Devil Wears Prada fountain. That's one thing that I was going to mention. For those of you who are fans of Devil Wears Prada, this is the fountain where at the end Anne Hathaway jumps out of the car and throws the cell phone as Meryl Streep's trying to call her, throws the cell phone into this fountain. Of course, symbolically saying enough is enough and that's the end of that story. Boy, these fountains just doesn't get any better. Let's move on. Uh, we gotta find a sidewalk. There aren't too many sidewalks around here. Hi, Carolyn. The fountains will probably be turning on very soon. Uh, I think they do a lot of maintenance in the, in the off season, so once it starts warming up and there's no fear of any freezing and they've got the mechanisms all cleaned out and everything, they'll fire them back up again. By the way, through, tomorrow through here is the Paris Marathon. So that's why there's some railings nearby and stuff. So uh, tomorrow you're gonna have all those runners coming through here famously for the marathon. Starts at the Champs-Elysees at the Arc de Triomphe and then makes its way here. So I'm actually quite happy that we're not doing this walk uh, tomorrow. All right, we're crossing. I see Belinda Fry's in the house, and that reminds me, I have a couple of shout-outs to make. That is a beautiful hotel called the Hotel de Clion, and I'm going to show you an up-close view of that, and we'll talk about some fun stories related to this building. But let me give a couple of shout-outs. So I know Belinda Fry, from what I understand, my cousin, is watching with a young person called Willow, Willow Pale. And I want to say hello to you, Willow. I understand that you are turning seven years old very soon, and I understand you really love Paris and you really love watching these videos. I heard that you're coming to Paris, Willow, very soon. So that's pretty exciting. I hope you have a wonderful time here. And if there's anything I can do to help you enjoy Paris, you let me know. You tell Belinda and she'll tell me. But I just wanted to give you a shout out. I really appreciate, Willow, that you're watching me. And just want to say hi to you guys. Another shout out that I want to make, Tana Morris has a son that she watches with called Matthew. And I've already, already given a, a Matthew a shout out before, but he made me the most beautiful birthday card, homemade birthday card for my birthday the other day. And I just want to thank you, Matthew. I wanted to do it on camera, officially, in front of all of these live virtual viewers. Um, thanks a lot, buddy. I really appreciate it. It was my favorite birthday gift that I received and birthday wish that I received. So that was really special. Thanks. Okay, shout outs taken care of. Now we're gonna to get to the Hotel de Clion, which is on the northern side of Place de la Concorde. By the way, over there is the American Embassy. And I'm not gonna get any closer with my camera because boy, they don't mess around at the American Embassy. If I get too close there filming, they'll snatch away all my equipment and then some. Yeah, I agree, Joanna. Willow's got a great name, beautiful name, Willow Pale. So the Hotel de Clion. This happens to be the hotel where, if you, have you ever heard of the story of the guy who sold the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, crazy, his name was Victor Lustig. And I've told that story before in um, other capacities. And if you take tours with me, um, I'll definitely share that with you. There's a guy who sold the Eiffel Tower and he managed to dupe his victim here at the Hotel de Clion. Very fancy spot right now. It's always been fancy here. Imagine that, a guy sells the Eiffel Tower. And he did it not once, but twice, by the way. It's just an extraordinary story. This city is so full of stories. It's like a really rich novel that you can't put down. And we walk down the streets. If you know a little bit about the characters and the stories that played out here, it was just a, it, it, it's really like a book that you just can't put away. Thanks, everybody, for giving Willow and Matthew shout-outs. That's really nice. I really have the, uh, the kindest viewers on the internet, that's for sure. Okay, here, here, this gets really fun. Now, at my back, let me just show you again. Place de la Concorde, even though it's going to be uh, backlit. As if the French Revolution and all that history wasn't enough, this is where the liberation of Paris played out in 1944, when the Nazis 
uh, after four years of occupation, got taken down uh, by the Allies and by the French Resistance. This was literally the final battlefield. And in a previous episode a while back, I showed a few bullet holes at Place de la Concorde, and there's plenty of that here. So let me turn around, and there's a reason I brought you over to Hotel de Crillon. I hope you can make this out on the video. Do you see that the leftmost pillar is darker than the others? Do you see that? We have three lighter limestone pillars and then the one on the left is darker. It's darker for a very interesting reason. Because in 1944, it's August, and they're, the Allies have coming in, are coming in and they're liberating uh, Paris from the Nazis. Well, there's a military term called the Fifth Column which I'm not an expert, but it means when there are dissidents within your nation and they're actually supporting the enemy, they're rising up and fighting as if they were an enemy faction in your own city. So the Allies come through here in Passe de la Concorde and they bring their tanks through and the tank gunner hears one of his comrades, one of the Allied soldiers say, over there quick, be careful, fifth column, fifth column. So the gunner makes a mistake and he thinks fifth column is the literal translation of basically a literal order of destroy the fifth column of the building. I hope that makes sense to you. So rather than a fifth column metaphorically as in, you know, a dissident enemy faction in the city, um, which it was, he actually took it literally and, and blew up this fifth column. So they had to replace it and they replaced it with an inferior bit of limestone and uh, it, it's absorbing the pollution a little bit more, frankly. And that's why it's very, a very subtle leftover from the Nazi occupation. But the fact that that fifth column on the Hotel de Clignon is a little bit darker is a reminder that that gunner uh, made a mistake and blew it up. Just to show you I'm not lying about the whole Nazi thing. We got some pretty substantial uh, damage here. So I know everyone loves a good bullet hole. And let's move on. Again, the walk today, if you're just joining us, is Place de la Concorde to La Madeleine. A church that uh, definitely deserves a lot of respect. Really lovely church. Thanks, Belinda. I'm glad you're into the history. We're going to make our way left onto the Rue Royale, but before we do, here's another thing that even I overlooked for a long time. I don't know how much you can make out on the video, but there's a lot of old graffiti here, just in this little niche on the corner of Rue Royale. So I don't know if you can make it out, but I see, for example, someone carved in the date 1840. Uh, someone carved in the date 1828. Should we go in there and carve in 2018? Nah, I don't think so. That wouldn't be too proper. But something about graffiti when it's really that old, I guess we, there's a statue of limitations as far as what, what I think about graffiti and my respect for graffiti. If it's a couple hundred years old, I'm, I'm okay with it. On to Rue Royale. You can see La Madeleine in the distance there. That'll be our final destination. Fantastic day today in Fahrenheit. It's 66, 67 degrees. Definitely the warmest day we've had, and I think everyone's feeling good. When I gave my Patreon subscribers, my um, VIPs and soulmates, the heads up of where we we're going to go, I promised them a midnight in Paris location. So this is Maxim's. Maxim's. And it's an old Belle Epoque, turn of the century uh, Art Nouveau masterpiece. And it's a restaurant, it's a very expensive restaurant. We're not gonna go in and bother them, but some details like that uh, on the, the door handles give you an idea. So in the 1890s, this bistro opened up and it was really where all the elite would dine. It was a place of Coco Chanel and Edith Piaf and uh, Marcel Proust and John Travolta, Travolta, Jackie Onassis, Streisand, and on and on and on. Lovely detail there. Personally, I can't really afford to eat at a place like this, but again, if any viewers come and take a tour with me and you want to treat me, hey, I wouldn't say no. So, the Midnight in Paris angle is that when Owen Wilson falls in love with Marion Coutillard, she dreams of going back to the Belle Epoque. So basically a carriage picks them up, a magical carriage, and whisks them back to this place, Maxim's back to the um, Belle Epoque, turn of the century. Let me show you uh, what's in the window here. Can make that out. 
Really some nice, uh, some lovely Art Nouveau action. Oh, good stuff. Oh, I've got some fun spaces to show you on the Hawaii Island. I'm excited. <coughs> Excuse me. My, uh, my pom-pom is particularly uh, visible today. So again, my name's Corey Fry, French Fry in Paris. If you're new to this series, every single week, I thought my coat fell. Every single week, uh, I do these live vicarious walks in real time to give you basically a feeling of Paris. It's, if you can't be in Paris, I'm gonna bring it to you. That's the idea. So uh, I wanted to say that I have a Patreon page. What is Patreon? It's a way for you to subscribe and get exclusive content, including stuff like detailed PDF maps of these walks. So um, if you wanna remember what you've seen and the stories that I've told, you can get a detailed map if you go to my Patreon website. And the link, the link for that is down in the description as well as replays of these previous videos on YouTube. And you can get to my Instagram. You can also book tours with me because I'm a full-time tour guide. Uh, so that's what I did. That's what I did earlier today. So you can definitely contact me via the links in the description and take a tour with me in real time. If you subscribe to Patreon, you'll even get a discount on those live tours, on those real life tours. Okay, so where are, are we? Enough talking. I have popped in while I was giving that little bit of a plug, the Galerie Royale. Just off of Royale, a lot of people uh, head over to the other side of the street for various reasons, but so let me show you. You pop in here, it's a lovely little courtyard and you've got a great lamp. Let me show you it's the very regal name of the Galerie Royale, but it doesn't stop there. As long as I get a little bit of uh, cell signal, Look at this. Uh, everything's closed today, but this is a, an, a, sharp, a shopping arcade. And because we're in the Eight Arrondissement, and it is very swanky and uh, very high end, it's of course super clean and super uh, modern. And I hope my cell signal lasts long enough for me to show you the main concourse area here. Beautiful, beautiful shopping mall. Again, there's not too much history here that I'm able to tell you about, but it's just more about the space and the fact that it's dead quiet. And there's a, a great statue here. When I came in here earlier today, I was the only one, and today there's only one other person. So very secluded. Very lovely spot. It's called the Galerie Royale. Oh, good stuff. Okay. I've got a couple more of those little spaces to show you too, so let's go. Why is it closed on a Saturday, Robin Parker asks. Well, that's a good question. Actually, I take that back because look, this place seems to be open, right? So I guess it just depends. Feels like you're walking into a grand hotel. So that's where we entered. Again, look at that lantern up there. Ooh, good stuff. But then you can actually exit here. There are two accesses to the street. Catherine, I agree. Quiet and elegant. Elegant is the perfect word. Some of these places are open, so I take that back. I do see a few uh, customers. So maybe they're, they're open, but just very quiet today. Everybody's out and about, that's for sure. Back to the commotion of the Rue Royale. I gotta tell you all again, if you didn't catch it earlier on, uh, my cafe chat, the private cafe chat for my Patreon members today, is gonna be a very special one. Uh, French girl in Seattle who has a huge following on Facebook and a wonderful blog about all things France really good stuff 
So she's going to answer your questions. Uh, I had some of you sending me questions ahead of time, and she's excited to answer those. Uh, and I know some of you um, aren't used to talking to French Girl live on camera. So that should be fun. Let me show you this. We're going to cut off onto the Grue du Faubourg Saint-Honoré, which is a bit of a mouthful to say. Right here at number three, where it says, I don't even know how to pronounce this, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Sartor, Sartore. Just another little spot. Look at that. Let's, let's just enjoy that view for a second, right? It's a postcard. So again, everything's really elegant, really refined in this area, and super expensive, let's be honest. Satori, they uh, seem to be selling shoes in there. Well, shoes and antlers. <laughs> Why not, right? Sorry if you animal lovers that you had to see that. So again, very refined and very uh, crisp, very classy, really, these things. It's not like an older, rundown, 19th century covered passage that you might see from time to time. Everything here is just spick and, spick and span clean. All right, back to Rue Royale. Yeah, Marilyn. Marilyn says even if it's expensive, it's fun to see. That's what I love about Paris. You can be around expensive, fancy stuff, and you don't have to spend a dime, which any of you who know me by now, that's definitely my philosophy here. Getting close to La Madeleine. Oh good, some of you are saying that that deer maybe didn't die to make it into that window, so. I guess that's good news. Okay, this is fun. Again, you, when you walk up the Rue Royale from Place de la Concorde, you definitely want to start stay on the left side of the street, because this is a spot called the Village Royale. Again, we just saw the Galerie Royale, and that's the Village Royale, everything's royal here. Let me show you this fun spot. Some of this stuff is really mov movie set quality, isn't it? Yeah, Marianne, there's plenty of Chanel around here for sure. So even though we're in a really crazy busy area with all that traffic and all that commotion, this feels like it's uh, you stepped into a little village, right? And it's all shopping, right? This is all designed around shopping. This is a cafe actually aptly named, right? Le Village. I'm gonna walk through a little bit further for you. <laughs> Boy, I gotta tell you, as I look, I look at these people in this cafe and it's really the hippest of the hip. Really the hippest of the hip. I'm sure they all wanna be on Facebook, right? They don't mind this. <laughs> the truth is, when I walk around with this camera talking into a microphone, people are going to look at me no matter what, so it's not really an issue. All right, let's get over to La Madeleine because French Girl in Seattle may already be waiting for us. We're going to actually go to a beautiful wine bar across from the church of La Madeleine. So it won't be Café Crème today, it's going to be wine. Let me check how we're doing on time here. All right, about 30 minutes, cool. Did I just see French Girl is a live viewer? Are you here, French Girl? 
Make yourself uh, heard if you are. That'd be pretty funny if French girl's already at the wine bar and she's watching live, waiting for me to arrive to her. That'd be pretty fun. So again, if you stay on the left side of the Rue, the Rue Royale, you won't be disappointed because I've got a, yet another little covered passage area to show you here. And just for reference, by the way, we're almost there, La Madeleine. That's what we'll be finishing up. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of Roman goodness right there. <laughs> That's a lot of Rome in the heart of Paris, let me tell you. That light looks gorgeous, doesn't it? So let me show you this. Galerie de la Madeleine, aptly named. Thy goodness. Oh, it's gorgeous. Let me step in a, a few steps here for you all. I can see the hearts and the thumbs up. I can see you're digging that. Uh, we're not going to go to Fauchon today. I saw someone ask if we'll go into Fauchon. I don't think we'll have time for that, but we could squeeze that into another video. Galerie de la Madeleine. Again, more shopping, more galleries. And more hidden spaces. So let's pop over to La Madeleine and wrap up this walk. I can tell you about this church as we make our way over there. Anytime you see something that is purely Romanesque like this, pretty much boils down to one man, and that's Napoleon Bonaparte. So the story was, during the French Revolution, when they were busy guillotining people down the street at Place de Concorde, this was an unfinished church. They were just the foundations, basically, and a, a little bit of a, a, a few walls. And so Napoleon comes in after the revolution, crowns himself emperor, and decides he's going to hold a contest to find an architect to build him a grand temple to his French army, right? His glorious army. So he holds this big, grandiose, elaborate contest, and then the jurors pick a, an architect, and Napoleon says, no, nah, I don't like that guy. I'm going to use my own guy. <laughs> so that's pretty classic Napoleon, right? So basically, where there was meant to be a Catholic church, Napoleon builds basically a Roman temple uh, in honor of his grand army, the French army. Now, this is an interesting, but this is actually fashioned or very heavily inspired by a building in Nîmes. In Nîmes? Nîmes? I don't even know how to pronounce it, to be honest. Um, it's called uh, La Maison Carré, I believe. And it's a, an example of Vitruvian architecture. Do you remember when uh, Leonardo da Vinci drew that that guy spread eagle with a circle around him, right? Uh, the Vitruvian man. Well, it was believed that the human proportions were the divinity of God or the divinity of science, the perfection of science. So there was Vitruvian uh, architecture. And that's what this is based on. So you wouldn't know it, but there's a real human element to how the ratios and the proportions of this church are set up. Um, it's based on ratios of the human body, believe it or not. So that's kind of fun. So why is it a church now if Napoleon didn't want a church? Well, eventually Napoleon fell from power and the Roman Catholic Church got a hold of this and they turned it into a church, which it was meant to be anyway in the beginning. Before we go up those stairs, how about a look at... Back to where we started, Place de la Concorde. Yeah, I know, the, the whole pronunciation of, of memes, I, you think I would have researched that ahead of time. I had seen it written so many times and then I decided, I realized when I started talking about it, I didn't even know how to pronounce it. So I guess the consensus is that you say meme without the S. Thanks everybody. Which is what they would do in French, by the way. That's what happens with live video. If this was pre-recorded, I'd go and edit that out, but you know what? This is me, this is live, that's how it goes. The Grand Stairs of La Madeleine. You can see people, it's a great place to hang out, grab your lunch at midday. But recently, they had a very notable funeral for Johnny Holiday. So let me show you this. There's a little leftover from that funeral. I don't know why someone put a, a little minion creature, but this is for Johnny Holiday. You can see there's a, a photo of him there. You know, of course, I don't know, could you describe him as the Elvis Presley of France? Maybe, I think I heard that said a few times. But. Uh, you basically can only have a funeral here if you're a big deal. And of course, John, Johnny Halliday, who recently died, was a big deal. 
And this crucifix made of roses is a leftover from that funeral as well. Speaking of funerals, here at La Madeleine, there were some big ones. Um, Frédéric Chopin, for example, had his funeral here. And when Chopin died, interestingly, what they played, from what I understand, at Chopin's funeral was this, Mozart's Requiem. So, actually, how great is that? You could actually come to this church, listen to Mozart's Requiem, and know that it was the same music played in honor of Chopin during his, uh, his funeral. Now, I know I don't have very good service in this church, but luckily they opened the doors. So let me see if I can just get, get in there just a little bit for you. Because I know some of you may never even get inside this church, so I really want to give you a look. Look at that. I don't know if you can make it out, but behind the altar, there's that big sort of half circle um, mural painted, that sort of a fresco. Well, you can't make it out, but it's crazy because you, at the top of it, you have Christ and Mary Magdalene, by the way, this church, right, called La Madeleine after Mary Magdalene. You have all of them, but in that same mural down at the bottom, you have Napoleon Bonaparte. So the Napoleon family actually, or the Bonaparte family, literally put Napoleon into the mural along with Christ, along with the apostles, along with the saints. Pure propaganda. Let's see. Oh, let me show you these doors first. Oh, these sculpted reliefs. You guys know me by now. I'm just a sucker for all of this stuff. Oh, let me show you the other one. I want to give a shout out, by the way, to everyone who right now has set up their table or they're projecting it on their wall or they're having their coffee in their Paris cup. I think that's fantastic. I love when you, when you guys do that. And I hope you send me more of those photos of you enjoying these videos. Famously, a while ago, one of the viewers was, uh, one of my viewers was 30,000 feet up in an airplane somehow watching this, uh, one of these walks. Okay, so I lost you at the very end, but that's okay. The walk is finished. So I want to thank you all officially for stopping by. Uh, I will see you next week for another live video.